The new Canadian movie, Don, Her Dad, and the Tractor, starts out with some bad news. A Nova Scotia dairy farmer named John Andrew has lost his wife, Miranda, to cancer, and their two grown children are coming back for the funeral. But like I said, that's just how it starts. So I want to play right now a scene from the movie that kind of sets up the rest of the story. We're at the farm in Nova Scotia. John Andrew's daughter, Tammy, has just arrived in Toronto with her fiancé, Byron, and they're all in the house. And that leaves John Andrew's other child, who he and Tammy haven't heard from in a few years. Take a listen to this. Should I get that? Hi. Help you? Uh, Jesus. Miranda. No, Dad. It's me. Dawn. Oh, my God. Hey, on. Like Dawn, her brother? No, like Dawn, her sister. Maya V. Henry plays Dawn in Dawn, her dad, and the tractor. And Dawn, in that moment, formerly known as Donald, has come back home after moving away to transition. And this is Maya V. Henry's first feature film, but she's been in front of a camera since 2014 when she started chronicling her own transition on YouTube. She became a trans activist through these video diaries, racked up 28 million views and over 218,000 subscribers. And all that leads me to say that I'm just delighted to say that Maya V. Henry joins me now in the studio. Thank you so much for having me, Tom. I'm so excited to be here. Are you kidding me? We're so excited <laughs> to have you. How are you? I'm good. I'm great. Yeah. It's uh, pretty cold still in Canada, but what can you do? <laughs> it's the, the most Canadian answer of all time is to ask how you're doing and just go straight to a, a weather and temperature answer. Unless it's summer, yeah. <laughs> how are you feeling now that this, this film's coming out? I'm so happy that people are going to be able to see it across Canada. It's going to be streaming. So I'm so excited that more eyes are going to watch it and that the message is going to get out to more people. Well, let's talk about that. So we just played the clip um, of of Dawn. She's standing there. Give us a little um, insight into what she, what's going through her mind, standing at the door, waiting for that door to open. Yeah, I feel like this is such a terrifying moment for her. She in the film has kind of had this divide between her family and her one connection was through her mother who has recently passed. So she's making this choice to return to this home that she once knew as Donald. And she hasn't really had a chance to preface her transition to her family. So it's this make it or break it moment. She doesn't know how they're going to respond or react. And of course, the human reaction is surprise and shock when something is so different from how you remember it. So in her mind, I think she definitely expected this reaction. And so she's kind of bracing herself for the moment. Are you from a farming community yourself, I heard? Yeah, I'm from Georgina, Ontario. Tons of farms. We have the uh, annual Sutton Fair as well. Um, tractor pulls, horse shows, everything. So true farming. Did, oh, yeah. Did you grow up on a farm? I had lots of chickens growing up, so right. like a somewhat farm, but not actual livestock or anything like that. Could you relate to Don in, in this film or in that moment? Definitely. I think there's so much that was parallel with our lives. Um, I grew up in a really, really small community, like you said, and I didn't have any awareness of the queer community, of LGBT culture. It was something that was just looked down upon in my community, unfortunately, or at least that's how I felt growing up. So I, like Dawn, went away to a city in order to transition and find my community. And then eventually you come back to your family and you're a bit different. So, <laughs> how, how is that? It's good for me. I'm very fortunate to have a loving and supporting family. Yeah. But there's always those little hiccups, you know, on, on the way to transitioning. I think that People need time and you have to have patience in order for people to adapt to the new version of yourself. Were there specific moments in Dawn's story where you were like, I see, I see me and her or I, yeah, I went through that too. Oh yeah, definitely. Any time that uh, she was face to face with someone that she remembered from her community, but they didn't recognize her at first, they expressed confusion. And there was even a scene on the front porch where someone has a sudden realization that this is... Donald, but now Don, and they freak out and they run away in terror. Luckily, I've never had a runaway in terror moment, but I've definitely had moments um, where I went to community events like my younger sister's graduation, and I'm faced with teachers that I used to have, and some of them don't mm. recognize me at first. I had mm. one teacher in particular, and she was like, where's... 
and I was standing right in front of her and that was my old name. And I said, I'm right here. Like I've changed, you know, <laughs> and just to see the shock on her face, that was uh, kind of what I channeled for this role in, in that moment with Dawn on the porch. So <laughs> I, mean, I, I I appreciate that. You know, the, the, the film in so many ways, I mean, it's about so many things. It's about family and it's about mm -hmm. love and it's about grief after a parent dies. And, you know, it was also it was also just nice to see a film that looked in a very in a very real way at how rural Canadian communities are adapting and changing in ways that you don't always expect uh, when it comes to, you know, LGBTQ plus communities with to, 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 you know, members of their own communities what, what do you think the film had to say about that? Yeah, I think it's really important because rural communities do have smaller populations. They get less representation. And so I think it's important to show that everyone is human, you know, and you might come from a small town and you might not understand things at first. But I think that the empathy is really key in learning about different experiences. And I hope that this film shows that smaller communities are very capable of growing and changing. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what I mean. I think I'm so used to films treating, because, I mean, you're from a rural community. Mm -hmm. I'm from sort of a rural province. And I'm from Newfoundland. And yeah. it, it feels like um, it's, it's easy to do a film or to tell a story about, you know, just to immediately go to like rural folks are backwards and, and rural exactly. folks don't get it and rural folks don't have the capacity for, for any kind of change in their lives whatsoever. It was nice to see a film that didn't do that, you know? Yeah, that can be very divisive, I think, because it's a judgment in and of itself of a community. And I would say that some of the most accepting people towards me have been the ones that I grew up with now after the fact. They send me so many supportive messages. And one of my best friends, my childhood best friend growing up, she moved to Newfoundland as well, and she's a Newfie. So, um, yeah, it's it, support is everywhere, and your family can be found anywhere. A little bit of classism in there, I think. Just, just a little bit, little bit of classism <laughs> in there. Um, uh, I mean, in the in the looking down on the rural communities. Yeah, for sure. That as well, definitely. Um, off, off topic a little bit. So playing your father in this film is Rob Wells, who played Ricky on the Trailer Park Boys. Were you familiar with, I've never, never seen him in a role like this. I've never seen him in a, he's brilliant in it. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like fabulous. he's. I mean, do you know him from the Trailer Park Boys at all? I knew that he was in the Trailer Park Boys, but I actually have never watched a single episode of the Trailer Park Boys. I know how Canadian am I. Um, but <laughs> I grew up around it. Um, a lot of my cousins loved it. I had lots of uncles that would watch it. And I knew like what a comedic genius he was. But I think part of me subconsciously like didn't want to be aware. And I just wanted to like focus on the film and not be so starstruck or into Intimidated, you know, <laughs> but he's also so different. Like he's not this. Oh yeah, he's so down to earth. He's so kind. He's like the dream dad. He's so nice. He took us, me and some of the other castmates, out for dinner one night on our one of our last nights of shooting, and we just had a heart to heart, and it was so lovely to work with him. Like he's such an amazing human. And the director of the film, Shelley. Wasn't she in Trailer Park Boys too? Yes, she played Mrs. Leahy. Barb Leahy. Yeah. <laughs> and she took you to Nova Scotia. H had you ever been before? No, I had never been. So I flew out right at the beginning of the pandemic uh, during the summer of 2020. And it was one of the first films to shoot on the East Coast when I was able to get out of quarantine. Every day um, that I had off, I would walk around the city. Um, Shelley took me to some local places to eat. And we went to the Halifax Public Gardens, which is so gorgeous. Right. And someone actually came up to me and recognized me, which I was so blown away by. It was another trans woman. And I was like, oh, my goodness, like, this is so nice. Like, I felt like such a community there already from how warm and welcoming that Nova Scotians are. And then there was also queer people that recognized me as well. So it, I honestly wanted to move to Nova Scotia after I visited. <laughs> well, they'll, they'll take you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, I'm not typically, uh, I don't typically ask a lot of questions about transition. Um, but I know that you've been very open about it and you, and you very much want to talk Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, about it, so I thought we, I thought we might. So I wanted to play this clip from YouTube, where you've sort of, you've been sort of documenting your transition from the beginning. This is from your very first video in 2014. Take a listen to this. Hi. So this is going to be my first official video. 
I'm really excited because I'm going to the walk-in clinic today. I'm going to see if I can get a referral. I'm very excited and very nervous at the same time. I don't know what's going to happen or what to expect. It feels so weird doing this video, just talking to a camera. Well, what goes through your mind hearing that now? Oh my goodness, it feels like a world away. Yeah. Um, but I have a lot of empathy for myself back then because I feel like that was when I was the most brave. I had to make the most decisions. And I was so young. I was 18 in that video, I think. So it was a scary time, but it was also an exciting time. And I just look back on that moment with so much respect for myself. But why was I mean, such a scary time and such an exciting time? Why did you want to... Um... Put it out on YouTube. Why did you want to document that process in such a public way? I hadn't really seen any representation of someone my age, like myself, on YouTube sharing their transition in that way from the very beginning. Right. Um, I'd seen a lot of like success stories afterwards, and I wanted to show the steps that it took and to see where it could go. So I started from the very beginning. I didn't know where to go or how to get help to medically transition. So I went to a walk-in clinic and I just kind of walked in and I said, hi, I'm transgender um, and I would like to have access to hormones one day. And eventually I was able to be referred to the right place to get that help. But yeah, that was a scary moment, just saying it out loud to a stranger for the first time. I had never even told my friends. It was all secret at that time. And I had posted it on the internet as kind of a secret diary and I didn't tell anyone about it. No one knew. How did it feel when you posted that first video? It felt like a little piece of freedom, like a little bar on the cage was disappearing. Oh. I felt like um, I was able to make a community online first before I was able to make one in person. What happens when we don't see the steps? You said you wanted to make the video so people could see the steps as opposed to just kind of one one video. Why? Like what happens if we don't get to see the steps, the, the, the sort of messy in-betweens? Yeah, I think sometimes transition can be sensationalized as like a before and after story and it's so glamorous or, you know, like right. it, it can be very um, physically misleading you know you don't see all the hardships we go through and the steps we have to take and all of the screenings we have to go through with psychologists and doctors and everything and then also just sharing the life experience and all the bumps in the roads that we may encounter you know how did making the videos help you out it helped me because initially I was kind of making them as a diary like I said as well and I wanted to chronologue my own journey so that I could look back and remember where I came from and keep track of where I was going so that I stayed grounded and I wasn't kind of swept away can I put you on the spot yeah what's a what's a comment or a piece of feedback that you got from one of your videos that maybe sticks out to you I honestly was just reading one the other day um, where a girl wrote to me saying that she had been transitioned for a couple of years now and it was all thanks to some of the videos that I made um, and it helped save her life. And, and that always just like blows my mind because to me, I just see numbers on the internet. I don't always see people's faces. So when they share their story with me, it's like so touching. And uh, she said that she felt like my videos, I was like a sister to her. So... And that was so nice. I have so many um, sisters as well, just in my family. So it felt like nice because I could understand that connection. That is, that is, that must be so meaningful to you. Mm -hmm, for sure. Talk to me about the decision to become an activist. Be you know, because that, that, that feels like a, an interesting decision on its own. Yeah, I think with trans people in particular, a lot of us kind of accidentally fall into activism at first. Yeah. Because just living our lives authentically is activism in a world that doesn't think we should exist. So that can be difficult because we don't always know what we're signing up for. So initially, I wasn't an activist. I was just sharing my life story, you know, like, this is me. How's it going, you know? Yeah, yeah here I am. <laughs> so um, that was hard at first. And then getting so much online hate and stuff kind of turned me into more of an activist because I realized how important it was to speak up and share my voice. Oh, you got, you got a lot of online hate. Oh, yes. Yeah. I feel like LGBT people in general get a lot of hate, but specifically trans people, there is just it's so blown out of proportion. Like anything we do makes a headline these days. And most of the time it's not positive. 
Yes, I mean, we, we, we don't have to focus on that. Again. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry that, that <laughs> fucking sucks. Um, I'm always cautious about um, making sure I delineate between activism and art mm-hmm. because they're different things and, and they come from different places in you. But was there, um, was there parts of your activist self that you brought to this role as Dawn? Definitely, but I think it was in a very subtle, quiet way. I think what I respected about Dawn a lot is that she's not a people pleaser. She knows who she is, and she's not going to change for anyone. So she's kind of like an anchor throughout the film, and everyone around her has to kind of calm, you know. There's a lot of rocking waves in that ocean that she's in. And yeah, she's... there's a lot of, like, transphobia. I was thinking about transphobia of politeness. You yeah. know what I mean? Of just being like a... Uh... No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But like, no, it's not fine. It's not fine. You know, yeah. you, you don't have to be polite in those. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, there. no, for sure. There's a lot of uh, downplaying certain moments because her own family is sometimes embarrassed on her behalf. Right. And so that can be very difficult as well because you don't have anyone else sticking up for you. And throughout the film, that starts to change a little bit. And so I think that that's a real important thing to share as well, that you might not feel supported at first, but hopefully with time and patience, people will come around. Talk to me about uh, what the director of the film said to get you on board here. Yeah, so Shelley has a trans son herself. Uh, his name's T. Thompson. And T. Thompson, incredible musician. Incredible musician. He's an amazing songwriter. Yes. Um, he, he's been played an awful lot on the show. Anyway, sorry, go on. Yeah, no, he's amazing. I also met with him before shooting as well and got to know him and his story a little bit. And this film really comes from um, a place in Shelley's life, um, her perspective as a transparent. I think that's what went into the writing of this film, um, just the dynamic and the relationship that she probably shared with T as well. So I definitely saw that perspective and I wanted to be a part of it because I know what it was like for my parents as well. And I don't think that it's a perspective that's often shown. Um, and it's about life after transition, you know, and how you get along with your family and, and, specifically how your parents adapt to their child that maybe they thought was their son, Donald, transitioning to Dawn and accepting them as a daughter and really seeing who they are, you know. I've heard the film be described as um, a love letter, like a love letter from the director to her son, as you mentioned, from, from Shelley to mm-hmm. T. And, but a love letter in a, um, in a lot of different ways. Can you relate to that, the idea of, a film, of this film being a love letter? Yeah, for sure. I think that it... Trying to think how to word this. I got time. <laughs> Perfect. Um, as a love letter, I feel like it is telling the community that you are important and you exist no matter where you come from, whether that's a small town or a big city. I think that it tells people that your family is where you find it. So Dawn finds it not only with her father and her sister after being estranged, but she also finds it in that coffee shop in the film. There's some queer people in the coffee shop, um, and that's like a safe haven for her throughout the film. So it's it's a love letter to queer people finding a home. The film is called Don, Her Dad, and the Tractor. We've talked about Don. We've talked about her dad. Can you tell us about the tractor? Yeah. <laughs> it um, It's a an ancient Ford Jubilee, as we say in the film. And uh, we had a few models of it. Really? Um, On set? Yeah. It was amazing. They were able to uh, find multiple versions of the tractor uh, so that we could have some throughout the film for various reasons. Um, but you growing up with chickens, you know, a little girl run, running around chasing around chickens, you weren't... Yeah. You weren't riding tractors. No, I wasn't. I had never ridden a tractor before in my life. And this was a, like a standard tractor, like an old ancient beast. How'd you do? Honestly, not bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I went too fast for some of the scenes, so they had to slow me down. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, it was amazing. Um, the only time I was super nervous was when we were doing one of the final sequences where I had to do a figure eight indoors with lots of extra actors around me. Is that hard? How do you do that? Yeah, it was just, it's like driving a car, but you just uh, 
pray because you don't know what's going to happen <laughs> with the machine. And it did break while I was doing it. No. And I thought, oh, my God, it's because I didn't shift the clutch or something properly. I don't know what happened. Yeah. There was oil leaking out. It was a this disaster. This all sounds very technically correct to me. There's a clutch, the oil. <laughs> I know. I'm like, radiator? No. Um, <laughs> okay. But then the community came together, and there was so many people even, um, like, on the set that just all came together from Andy Ganesh as well, where we were shooting at the time. Yeah. And they all worked together to fix the tractor. And then we got it going. And it was like a little movie in and of itself on set. So super cool. And you, so, and did you pull off the... Yep, we did it. We got it all done. And uh, fun fact as well, mm -hmm. after the film, I went back home and visited my family, as you do. And my neighbor had actually got almost the exact same tractor and was restoring it. I know. Talk about farm life. I, and my dad was helping him and he was like, so uh, I heard you fixed a tractor in your movie. Like, when are you going to come help me fix this one? And I was like, this is too crazy. I'm off the clock. Dad. <laughs> yeah. I don't have to do this right now. I'm not Don. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lovely to meet you. It's such um, a beautiful film. Um, I, I couldn't. I had to write about it as I was watching it, which I never do. And I thought it was so beautiful. And you were you were so great in it. Thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.